Hi everyone, this is the Reads with Rosa podcast. I'm your host, Rosa, not Rosa. On today's very first episode, I'm going to be chatting to a fellow educator and Pacific Island sister all the way from Fort Worth, Texas. Enjoy the show and don't forget to subscribe below. Welcome to Reads with Rosa. It is my pleasure to welcome your friendly neighborhood eighth grade science teacher and podcast host on the Tea with Crema, Emanita Alatini from Fort Worth, Texas, welcome hello everyone and i just want you to know that i'm also joined here today with rosa not rosa <laughs> yes excellent okay we're going to get along so um emma if i call you emma how are you how are you doing with this pandemic oh that's a day by day question there's some days where i'm just you know, confused as to why I am teaching in a school full of children and there's a pandemic going on in a state that is not handling it very well. Um, but I am trying. And I think that's all I can say is that we are trying out here. Mm. And how are your kids coping, um, you know, amidst the pandemic? Yeah, it's been interesting because so my my campus is 100 percent English language learners. So they're all newcomers to the country. And normally in a normal school year, like they get to know each other, they can sit together at lunch, um, learn about each other's cultures. And it's been really academic driven this year, just because like they can't sit in groups and, um, you know, they can't really like share supplies or anything. And there's not that usual banter that we get during um, a school year. And so it's been kind of hard. And the kids are feeling it too, because they're like, I just want to be in class without a mask on. And I'm like, I so get that. Like, I completely get that. And it's just so much safer for you to not. And so they're they're coping as well. I, I can't imagine what it must be like to be in a new country and trying to learn English. And they are, you know, trying their best in a pandemic. So I give all the props to the kids because they're really doing their best. Yeah, I can so relate to that in terms of the academic, right? Because now we have these routines where we're not just going into the classroom and teaching you know the students are not just coming in it's the whole let's wipe down the desks wipe down the supplies or like you said you can't share supplies um, it's the opening of the windows and I don't know how cold it gets in Fort Worth Texas but in Tokyo it's so cold but we have to keep the windows open for a certain period of time so like a lot of what you're saying like, it, like as educators like I feel that you know it resonates with me um, but I was wondering, like, with that situation, like, how motivated are the students, you know, to learn? Like, obviously, there's, as you mentioned, the whole academic, the drive for academic. Um, but, like, are they motivated to learn despite all of this? Yeah, I I will say that they are. My kids are, like, some of the most hardworking kids. Their, their navigation stories and their immigration stories over to the uh, U.S. are just they remind me of my of my father's and so when they like talk and they're like I have all these jobs you know and then I go home and I help my mom you know take care of my siblings and all these things it just motivates the, it motivates me to show up every single day for them but it's also motivating to see them because they are so eager to learn English and they are so willing to try even in this like wonky time um and so they come in and they're like trying out all their slangs with me that they see on TikTok. And I'm like, I am not your friend. Do not ever address me like that ever again. And so they come in. Um, but it's cute. It's all good. It's all in good fun. So we'll always like talk together. So like, yeah, I, I, I've, I've kind of seen a bit of that on, on your stories. And I'm like, OK, this teacher is a vibe. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm not on TikTok, but you do you, sis. You go ahead. <laughs> It's so funny because I can't TikTok, so my kids always make fun of me, and they'll come in, and there's this one song that they love. It's the Corvette Corvette song, and so they'll be like, Miss, Miss, and I'm like, what? And they're like, Corvette Corvette. I'm like, Corvette Corvette. And so I don't know how to TikTok. I don't do it well. I just hop on my kids' TikTok, so if you ever see me hijack their TikTok, you know why. <laughs> and, like, I love your vibe. I think I've said that to you before, and there's just so much energy and enthusiasm there, and it's really refreshing, especially during a pandemic. Like, I feel as if we do not, like, make fun at ourselves. You know, if we don't laugh, if we can't laugh with the kids, if we, we're just going to let this pandemic overtake everything, right? So I love sure. that you're just so relaxed. I'm sure you're professional too as an educator, but I love that you can vibe with the kids 
because if they see you're not taking yourself seriously like it's all about that building rapport right um but i just i wanted to just backtrack a little bit you mentioned your father and his story so would you be able to share a little bit about that or his journey yes america for sure so i'm um i'm first generation tongan american fourth generation japanese american i guess depending on who you ask and so like the most the closest to proximity to immigration i'm with my dad and so he immigrated here when he was a teenager and he always talks about how he has such a heart for my kids because he can relate to their story so much he came over with all of his siblings his five older sisters um himself and i think there's four below him Ooh, I'm gonna if if I can. island families <laughs> exactly <laughs> big families you know <laughs> that's the vibe and so he's the <laughs> oldest boy as well and so because of that he always talks about how he had to like his focus wasn't on school it was on working like he had to go to school because it was mandatory but it was mostly on like working and helping his parents um, you know provide for the family and so when I tell him about like I have these kids who have to like they come to school and then they go straight to their job afterward he's like yeah that's like what you do you just gotta do it and I was like but like what about school and he's like they'll they'll focus on school like they'll prioritize it but you know at the same time there's so much other things going on that you just can't see in the classroom I'm like oh yeah you're right so he always like grounds me and puts me into perspective of the immigrant narrative and like you know always sharing his story and how they came to the U.S. with so little and you know so many kids that it's hard to provide sometimes and so um, you know, I'm greatly indebted to my grandparents for immigrating over here, you know, hoping to seek better life for their grandchildren and great grandchildren and all the progeny of our family. So, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, that's just our, our immigration story here. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And, um, and then with your mom, with your mom's family, have you been to Japan? Have you spent some time here? <clears throat> So I've actually never been to Tonga or to Japan. It's really sad. I it's hate fun. it. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm really trying. Um, my mom has also never been to Japan. Um, so she is, I, I, again, like depending on who you ask, she would be either second or third generation Japanese. Um, her Both of her parents were born here. And then depending, either the grandparent or great grandparent was born here. Um, and so my mom grew up kind of speaking Japanese. Her grandmother only spoke fluent Japanese, um, but she grew up speaking like local Japanese, like Hawaii Japanese, which is not formal at all. I went to Japanese school and then stopped because I just didn't have anyone to practice with either. Um, and so I've never been to Japan. I feel like I am kind of rooted to the culture, but more like the adapted culture. And if you're from Hawaii, maybe you know, um, if you've been to Hawaii, you can kind of see like there's like a whole like Japanese people living in Hawaii. Um, have a, It's kind of different than actual Japan. So yeah, so I feel like I was like, with both sides a lot, like I'm very close to my mom's side, and I'm very close to my dad's side. So it's not like, it was like, I was, you know, being pushed to one side, and we only hung out with one side. Um, so yeah, it was pretty unique growing up that I had to experience both cultures. I feel like they're both pretty similar in that, you know, respect your elders, family values, you know, collectivism. It's a whole, they they tie together pretty nicely. Right. And I feel that like people ask me all the time, they're like, why, like, why are you living in Japan? Like, why Japan? But I've, that's exactly what I say is, you know, seniority and that collective, you know, like family is so important. Uh, oral traditions, you know, the culture is so enriching. Like, all of that reminds me of Samoan culture, right? I mean, obviously there are differences, but I love Japan. Like, the people, the language, just the history. <laughs> the history, you know, we can talk a little bit about the history, but, you know, like, in terms of tradition, like, it just reminds me so much of our own Pacific cultures. And the people here are just, they're so, they're great, like, so friendly. Like, I've never had... Um, you know, any issues living here. Um, but I, I feel also that they love Pacific Islanders. So, you know, we're a little special. <laughs> yeah, they have, they, I, it's something, I don't know what it is, but I mean, even living in Hawaii, like you always see Japanese people. It's a whole thing. Like I right, right, right. don't fully understand it, but I mean, I get it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so I want to, I saw something on your story. Um, I think it was last night and I may have commented, 
but um, I wanted to go back to the pandemic. So when this pandemic started, like, I don't know about you, but on social media, everyone was baking bread. Everyone was like, New Zealand, back in New Zealand, like people that I know, they were making bunny popo, you know, the sweet, and I was the coconut buns. Everyone was doing like gardening, DIY. Um, but what for you? And then, okay, so then I saw in your story that, what a show off. You were making like cinnamon buns. Oh, what do you call them in America? Cinnamon, cinnamon rolls? Buns or cinnamon oh, rolls or something? Yeah, cinnamon yeah. is the type of the company that makes cinnamon rolls. Right. And then I was like, what on earth? Because I could see like the process, right? And then the finished product, I was like, oh my God, it looks so delicious. Tell um, me about your cinnamon buns. My cinnamon buns, it's so. <laughs> Like during, like, like just exactly what you said. I was uh, just like laughing my butt off because you were saying how everyone took a baking and gardening, and I, I was mean, so. There's nothing wrong with it. There no, there's nothing wrong. wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. But I was definitely a basic pandemic gal out here with my garden. Um, I don't garden. I don't have house plants. And who all of a sudden, you? like, who am I? What is this pandemic doing to me? So I literally have so many like plants now i also started a garden outside so i am a trying tomatoes again and i have uh jalapeno peppers and strawberries outside and then i have all these house plants inside and so i live with my mom um we're forever roomies and she's like if you bring home another plant i'm going to kill you and i'm like but don't you like all this like oxygen it's like really good for your for your lungs and she's like please stop bringing them home like we have no more space so I started planting during the pandemic. Um, I've only killed like three plants so far. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> well done, well done. I can't even keep a plant. So hey, props to you. <laughs> um, and then baking, it's so funny because uh, my my best friend and co-host on my podcast, he got a mixer for Christmas and he was like, let's start baking because we used to always bake at my house because I had the I had the KitchenAid. And then so he got one. So we started with cakes and they just like have not been turning out the best as what we wanted. And recently I was like, oh, man, like I was like I've been craving cinnamon rolls and we always go to Cinnabon. But it's like five to seven dollars for just like one. And I was like, we can make it. It looks so easy. And my aunt in Hawaii used to make them all the time. And so I was like, you know, she makes the best cinnamon rolls. So if I could just try to get on her level, I'll be so good. And then I made them yesterday and they came out. I was pretty impressed. They were very easy. They were so fire. I was just like, oh my goodness. Stop it. <laughs> I was just like, it looks so delicious. Like, you know, usually you'll watch a story through and then it gets to the end and you kind of giggle like, oh, that was a bit, that was a bit of a fail. You're, like, like, you're not going to tell the person. But I was really impressed. I was like, so she's a this and that. And she makes beautiful cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I know my so boyfriend my was like oh I'm so sorry no 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 go ahead. I was like and my boyfriend because he saw him one he goes can you make bunny popo next I was like um do they got that on google because I don't know if I can make that recipe I was like let me go ask your mom real quick but and then, can you can you send them my way I don't yes. know how long it would take to get to Japan but I'm so there for that <laughs> so yeah. that's my that's my next venture is bunny popo <laughs> that is awesome I had to throw that in there because then it's funny that you mentioned the cakes because my next question was, what's a quarantine hobby that you attempted but have already given up on? So I'm guessing it's the cakes. Okay. <laughs> cakes. And um, there are certain plants that I've just given up on that have <laughs> done me wrong uh, because I also don't keep, we live on the first floor. So my mom's kind of like wary about like keeping our blinds open. I'm like, my plants need light. And she's like, no one's home. And I'm like, but my plants are going to die. So there were a lot of plants that I got that needed medium light. And uh, mm. I have low light in my home. <laughs> so yeah, so cakes are a no-go. I haven't tried actual bread yet, but maybe that'll come up. And then there's certain plants. Yeah, just add it. Just keep adding it. Um, let's crack up. So you mentioned Chris, your friend Chris. So let's talk about this podcast. Okay, so for anyone watching, listening, Emma is a podcast host. The Tea with Crema. I mean, tell us, how did this come about? I mean, your friend Chris is also a teacher, right? Yes, so he's also a teacher. He's also multiracial. So it was like a whole thing that that's kind of how we became friends is because we were in 
a little old organization called Teach for America. <laughs> and so we uh, kind of became connected because as part of their like DEI or diversity, uh, equity and inclusion initiatives, they have these things called affinity spaces. And we were part of the multiracial one. And so he's multiracial, I'm multiracial. Um, we're both teachers. And we just had these like really deep conversations about surrounding like race, education, equity, things like that, that we haven't really touched yet on the podcast because we're still trying to figure out how to like bring it up because it's not a light, it's not a light conversation starter. Right. And so, um, which is also something that like, we shouldn't be shy around. Um, you know, we just got to talk about it. And so we always talk about these themes and things that we see. He's also a part of the LGBTQ community. And so it's like, um, like how can I show up better for him in spaces that are generally not welcoming of uh, him just based on his like sexuality and so that's like kind of how we kind of got started with it and we're like man we're so funny together and my boyfriend is like y'all are not funny and I'm like yes we are we're so funny and so that's how we decided to start a podcast that was also a pandemic like copy <laughs> that came out of nowhere right because I saw that your first episode dropped was it December 19? I mean, not that I'm memor memorizing dates, but I may have looked on Spotify before this. But yeah, wow! So like, <laughs> but um, like I've listened to a few of the episodes and I was just like, you got, I mean, you work really well together. I think you're funny, but you know, it's so good. <laughs> I think he just likes to keep us humble. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we were like, I mean, why not? And honestly, at the, at the time too, we were just kind of starting it as a way to, um, like, I guess document our journey through our mid twenties and kind of like, instead of, you know, putting together a journal, now we have something that's on the internet. <laughs> so <laughs> like our kids can go back and listen to it if they really want to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love it. Uh, what do you remember about your first day of teaching? Oh my gosh. I remember being so nervous like I just like I couldn't sleep the night before it felt like the first day of school and I still feel that way just because like I don't know my kids um I'm really nervous I know that they're nervous and my first day of teaching I remember oh my gosh I can like remember my first class coming in and I was like they're gonna eat me alive I don't know how to do this I was like they're gonna know I don't know how to do this and once I like got into it and like I felt like I got into the groove and I was like, okay, you know what? They're just as nervous as I am. Like, this is their first day. I'm speaking completely in English. They're kind of just like, what did she say? <laughs> what? What is going on? Um, and once I figured that out, I was like, okay, you know what? I got this. This is fine. And I kind of have like this mantra that I tell my kids every year. We say it before we start class and it's, um, I am capable. I am able. I got this. <laughs> are you capable oh, wait. i am capable i am able i got this. got this and they don't understand what it means in the beginning they just kind of like say it they're like why are we repeating this weird thing like first they make us say the pledge of allegiance and now they're making us say this <laughs> it's a she whole thing. forcing us she's <laughs> forcing us she's indoctrinating us and i'm like oh my gosh but by the end and i still have kids my first set of kids is actually graduating this year from high school and it's like making my heart cry a little bit because I feel a little old. But I had a student reach out to me and she was like, hi, miss. Like, just wanted to let you know I'm a senior. I just want you to know that every single day I always tell myself I got this because, you know, like I do. And I was like, yeah, you do. You got this. I love that. That man, teacher life, right? Yeah. Makes it all just, worth it. Right. And you just don't realize how much of an impact that you're having on these kids. Like, if, like that mantra sounds so... You know, it's just, it's like, uh, you know, but to think that they're going away and actually it's still, you know, using it and, and repeating it to themselves. I mean, that's huge. Um, I wanted to ask about your classroom decoration, your class door decoration, your door decorations. <laughs> because like, I am different, like, I saw on your page, you had two photos up, of, you know, showing your uh, classroom door decorations like I'm definitely someone who loves to decorate the classroom and the door is 
it's important because that's the door they that's they walk in that's the first thing they see i love that um tell me about your doors your door decorations because it looks like so much effort went into it right yeah and i'm super competitive and so every (laughs) single you know surprise surprise um i'm super competitive and so um like maybe twice a semester someone like either the counselors or our, like college career counselor will have a competition and so I decided to just like decorate my door the front side of my door is like filled with dreams um so this year our school is kind of doing like a house system kind of like Harry Potter um and that becomes like my advisory and so we're the house of dreamers and it's really cool because I get to work with sixth and seventh graders which I don't normally because I have a section of eighth graders and then one section of ninth graders and so I just asked my kids and when they're that young like sixth and seventh grade I was like what do you want to do when you grow up one of them was like I want to be a doctor dancer teacher I'm like yes girl you go be that (laughs) doctor dancer teacher I don't know when you're gonna do all those things like maybe in one day I have no idea but if anyone can do it you can do it and so that front part of the door is just filled with their dreams and like what they hope to accomplish in you know in their lives a lot of them wanted to be um one of them wants to be an artist one of them wants to be like work as a firefighter and so they have these like super huge dreams and I just want to acknowledge that and I just want them to know that like you can do it right like you're so young you have so much time in your life and everything that you want to do it's like it's going to be on you you want to be a doctor go ahead like go and do that like believe in yourself and then the opposite side was it was for our college and career readiness week and so they asked us to decorate our door um some people put up their like alma maters for school but i like to show the kids other schools that are around in the u.s because they just only know texas christian university which is right down the street from us great campus you know it's a private school it's very expensive and so i was like i like to put on different universities and they come in and like miss where's that school and i'm like oh that's in california that's where i went to school and they're like oh um, and then I also put up like different majors They're like what what is that what what kind of major is you know finance and I'm like oh you like money like money <laughs> and they're like oh money and they're like, I'm like yeah and so, um, so you know they just like it just it's a conversation starter a lot of times and so the kids you know when they leave the class, they see all those colleges. When they enter the class, they see dreams. I didn't realize how metaphorical it was until right now. Um, you know, maybe I was starting something. I just didn't want to take down my front door because it took so long <laughs> to put up. So I was like, I'm just going to decorate the back of my door. <laughs> I love it. Like, honestly, like, even and now hearing you talk about it, like, it just all makes so much sense. Like, sis, you are, oh amazing extraordinary like i can just feel your energy as a teacher like and like over this 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 interview over this call this podcast it's we definitely need more of you out there right like and we need more islanders in teaching right we need more of our polynesian people um you're just you know a natural go-getter i love the whole competitiveness (laughs) Because, you know, like, our, well, we don't decorate doors, but I still decorate my door anyway. But my homeroom, we had class, uh, we had homeroom Christmas competition, like door decorations. And so we have two doors in our classroom, in our homeroom. And then we were told, decorate only one door for Christmas. Nah, I'm so competitive. I was like, girls, they were like, but miss, it says one door only. I was like, we don't do one door. We're going extra two doors but you know what happened they came around <laughs> two doors they came around to like um judge and they said well you weren't meant to do two doors now choose which one you want so we had two groups that did the two different doors and then they were like oh, i guess we'll choose that you know they were so like upset Aww. i guess we'll choose that one but this even more what, what made it worse is we did it when i was like <laughs> I was like, sorry, girls. Like, I honestly, I thought we have double the chance. I still think our doors were the best. I mean, rigged. You know, the competition was rigged. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I was. I was so like upset. Like, oh, favoritism. It was rigged. <laughs> but my, yeah. I mean, they know Aww. how hard going extra I am. But it just listening to you just was like, yo, I know, I know that feeling. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, and my kids were that that back door, the one with the balloons. I was like. I was dreading it because 
first I was like, I'm not going to do a door. Like there's not enough time, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, but like the college career counselor is so nice that I was like, no one is decorating their door. I need to decorate my door. And so I decorated it. My kids, that those same sixth and seventh graders came in and they saw me cutting out balloons. They're like, miss, miss, I'll cut out some balloons too. <laughs> so like I had one little girl, she's so sweet. She went out, she grabbed all the balloon papers and she like passed it out. And all the kids were like, I'm not doing that. She's like, you cut it for, <laughs> she's like, you cut it for miss. And she's going to decorate the door and it's going to look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you need to be a manager somewhere because you are very good at it. Or a teacher or something because you are very demanding. And all the kids are like cutting it around and stuff. I was like, oh my gosh. But yeah, it was a class effort for that one. <laughs> right. And I think kids, like when they, like they really do appreciate it. Like they really see when teachers are going hard, you know, hard out for them. And it's awesome. Like I like I said, I love your vibe. I'm just going to probably be saying it like every segment of the show. Um, but if I was a fly on the wall in your classroom, what would be happening? What would I see in your oh classroom? My goodness. If I was a fly on the wall? Lots of singing, lots of dancing. Um, my brain does, our classes are like 90 minutes long. And I was like, my brain cannot function for 90 minutes of just listening to me talk. So there's a lot of discussing going on. Um, I like to bring, I actually do like to bring up like Pacifica issues and discussing different things that are happening in Pacifica that have to do with science. Um, and so we were talking about energy. So I brought up like the nuclear energy crisis that we see happening all over uh, Micronesia and things like that. So my kids kind of get to learn a little bit more than just like the standard curriculum. Um there's a lot of, yeah, I do a lot of singing and dancing. I do a lot of uh, trying to attempt to do TikToks just to get the kids engaged. And they're kind of like, what is she doing? I'm like, pay attention. I was like, whoa. And they're like, please stop that. And they're like, will, we, will you stop if we pay attention? I'm like, yes, I will stop. Like, come on. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of them practicing their English. A lot of times it's more like slang English. And I'm like, y'all, that's not how we talk. And I was like, but that's okay. You're learning your col your colloquial English and that's fine. It's, like, <laughs> um, it's a start. <laughs> it's a start, exactly. And so I do just like, we're always constantly clowning each other. Like, it's terrible. I mean, I... <laughs> But I mean, like, I, that's how I know it's a good marker of them learning English because right. they're able to use sarcasm and use it correctly. And so I'm like, when you're able to, like, use it back, then I know you've learned some English. And so, I love it. yeah, so that's constantly what we're doing in my class. I would like to say that we're doing academic things, too. We are. We're doing some <laughs> science. Like, we're doing science, you know? Some science, yeah, we're yeah. doing experiments. We're doing all the then. You know? Um, it's kind of hard because we're in a pandemic and they can't touch anything. So it's kind of boring. So I try to like take them out. We go on nature walks. We talk about, you know, while we're on nature walks, we kind of see like we see our science in real world. Um, and so I like to do stuff like that. I'll be like, OK, let's like go on a walk and like let's look for different mutants forces while we're out there. I'm like, OK, come on, let's go. So the kids really like it. <laughs> it's awesome. OK, so I wanted to go back to your homeroom motto. So dream big and aim high i think that's what i saw in your post that is your homeroom motto for the year so then you also had a question on the post and the question was what did you want to be when you were a sixth or seventh grader i mean did you ever think that you would be a teacher like no not at all i did not want to be a teacher at all i was i wouldn't say i was a terrible student maybe my teachers can attest to that i was just very like I always needed to know why. So like my teachers would be like, okay, we're gonna do this. I'm like, okay, but why? And I was one of those kids that was just always giving the teacher a hard time. And so they always say to that, like those kids are the ones who become teachers and that's what I am <laughs> right now. So I think I brought that upon myself, um, but I wanted to be an engineer and I actually studied bioengineering in my undergrad. And I came to Texas and this was not the right place for the industry of bioengineering. So no, I did not want to be a teacher. I wanted to be an engineer. Um, after graduating with my undergrad, I could not find a job in the industry. And one of my really good friends from college was actually teaching out here. And he was like, oh, you should like apply for Teach for America. Like there's no guarantee you're, you'll get in. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. There's no guarantee. But you know, me being competitive, I made sure I got in. <laughs> so I started teaching and I just fell in love with it. I did my two-year commitment and I kept on going and I was like, you know what? This is like cool. And it's actually 
really funny because I'm actually a third generation teacher. So my grandfather was a teacher in Tonga. Um, he was actually a principal out there. And then my aunt is a she was an elementary school teacher for a really long time in Hawaii. And then now I'm teaching middle school in Texas. So it's kind of like all full circle. I don't know how maybe I got the teaching gene. I have no idea. But I'm sure you did. It's in the blood. I it's, love it. <laughs> it's in the blood. The ancestors knew. So that is how I yes. got that's how I got into teaching. <laughs> wow. Um like you know, teachers, they say that you know, teaching, we are lifelong learners. Um, so for you, like, how do you continue to learn and stay on top of your game? Like, obviously, you're a science teacher. Um, yeah, how do you, like, what other things are you doing outside? I mean, obviously, as teachers, it's such a busy, busy, busy career to be in, right? Profession. So where do you find the time to kind of upskill and stay on top of your game? Yeah, I am always, yeah, again, like I'm constantly learning. I am trying to go to like as many conferences as I can. I have just recently this year started dabbling in presenting at conferences. And so I did my first, I actually did three presentations this year and they were all on different topics, which was weird. <laughs> um, but I decided I was like, you know what, now's the time. Like I'm doing cool things in my class. I want other teachers to know what I'm doing. Um, I've always appreciated my mentors for taking the time out to like, you know, send me different things, help me out with different things. And so I felt, you know, like this is my way I can get back to the science teacher community and show what I'm doing in class and, you know, maybe inspire someone else to can, you know, do something different. And so I'm constantly reading up on, you know, different pedagogical things. I'm, you know, taking part in like different professional development. I... Yeah. And so that's like a lot of what I've been doing. And because most of my friends from my undergraduate degree are like still engineers and things, I like to like ask them, like, what is going on in the world? Like, right. tell me what's going on in tech. And so they all work at biotech. And so it's really cool to get to see what they're doing. Um, and like being able to make that connection to that real world where they're like, oh, I'm working on this. I'm like, oh, cool. Let me like bring that in for my lesson that I'm going to talk about, you know, in a couple of weeks. And they're like, oh, OK. And so you know, that's what I, I try to do. And, you know, again, like you said, it's so busy. Like there's like not enough time. There's not enough hours in the day, honestly. Right. And when do you sleep? Really? Do you sleep? <laughs> no, no, you know, like it's so funny, like during the school year, I do not sleep. And so I think that's why during the summer, I'm just like the whole time because I'm so <laughs> tired. I know. I mean, are you, am I the only one counting? Uh, surely I can't be the only one counting down to summer break, right? Like, I mean, of course not. Break. Why? Well, I would never count down to summer break. I love being here. No, honestly, I'm the same way. I was counting down to spring break and then spring break ended. And I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going to make it? Like, this yeah. has been such a hard year. So, right. I mean, <sighs> I, like, I'm always curious to know how other teachers are coping. Like, in terms of, I mean, obviously, when you're in the classroom and really thinking about, like, how are my students doing? Like, you know, how are they, like, health-wise, like, mental well-being, that kind of stuff, like, mental health. Um, but for you, like, outside of teaching, like, how do you look after yourself, like, as an educator, as a hard, you know, like, teachers don't stop. That's the thing, right? Like, when we're in, when school is in session um, from August to June, like, we don't stop. Like, even trying not to take work home, you know, sometimes you just have to. And, like, how do you look after yourself? Uh, outside of work oh this is gonna be the one for all the teachers I don't just kidding <laughs> um, I am, and I that was actually one of my things that I wanted to accomplish this year was actually coming together and like having a solid self-care plan um if you listen to the podcast you'll hear it on the first episode I don't know how to self-care that's something I don't do well I'm such a perfectionist in the way that I just need to like go 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 and teaching wise I just need to like go 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 that I don't ever take the time to take care of myself and so now I've been a lot a lot more intentional about like working out like leaving work at school and that has taken me I'm only this is my fourth year in the classroom it's taken me four years to finally say no I'm going to leave this at school and my mentor said something to me in my first year and I just like it's never clicked until this year work will be there tomorrow no matter what you do today like you will still like your to do your to-do list will never go away um and so it will always be there tomorrow there's no use in trying to 
work, 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 not taking care of yourself. Because if you are not taking care of yourself, you're not showing up for your kids the way they need you to. And so that is something that I always have to remind myself is that I can't take care of my kids if I'm not taking care of myself. You know, you can't pour from an empty glass. And so that is something that I am working on. Um, You know, I tried. So like, again, I have been like working on uh, working out. I want to say I've been eating healthier, but this, I don't know, this pandemic been having me, you know, I got that cute little quarantine 20 going on. (laughs) (laughs) And that's okay. (laughs) It's okay. It's all good. Um, But yeah, definitely great advice. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, they will replace you, you know, like if you're too sick to go in and then something happens to you, they can replace you just like that. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah work will always be there I mean I say that to my students as well right because obviously in this pandemic um, a lot of my students are just feeling overwhelmed um, not meeting deadlines you know and I just said like because we're on spring break now and I just said to especially my grade 11 cohort I was like girls please take some time off to have a break even if you have one or two days to treat yourself you know, catch up with your friends, do something with your family. It's so important. That work will always be there. Those assignments will always be there. They're not going to go away. You oh, know, so God. like, yeah, you, I mean, applies to teachers and students as well. Like I just, we're in this time, like that we're living in a time where, you know, self-care is so important. And if you don't look after yourself, you know, you're and I, of no use to anyone. So. Exactly. And I feel like especially just like what I've, I, uh, and you know, I've never lived in Japan, but like, I feel like there is a culture of like workahol, not, I don't want to say like workaholism, but like almost to that point where um, I think it's so important that you're teaching the kids that, that they need to take care of themselves because, you know, when they go into the workforce, like no one's going to take care of them. They got to take, they got to know how to take care of themselves first because, you know, no one's going to watch out for them <laughs> as well as they will watch out for them. And so I think that that's super important. I'm glad that you're teaching them that because, you know, we don't need to see another generation of folks that are not practicing self-care. And, and, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when, um, like, we've had two set of emergencies, um, but, I mean, a lot of people are not sticking to, you know, they haven't been sticking to the, um, you know, try and work from home. And, I mean, because I commute to work, like, every day, it's just still like this on the train like people are still going into work and it's just so hectic and it's real stressful you know you're like trying to get on the train everyone's trying to social distance but you can't yeah. like, you can't physically distance and it's just just people just work 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 i mean they always release statistics on the news and they say that a lot more people are working from home now um but i'm like really because where i live people are not working from home people the trains like Fake. Still what's news? I'm like, whose statistics are those? <laughs> Tell me right now, liars. <laughs> but yeah, definitely like the work culture. I mean, you know, hardworking people. Of course, a lot of my students, you know, they share stories about their parents, uh, you know, working, and it's hard, eh? Because like, obviously, it's livelihood, right? And and you know, families need to work, businesses need to run, but it's just, you know, I don't know. Um, I wanted to, before we get into reading, I just wanted to ask you, what is a common myth or misconception about teaching that you'd like to call out? Is it like a myth or like Ooh. things that you've heard people kind of say and you're like, excuse you. <laughs> when they talk about summer breaks, when people are like, well, teachers get summer breaks. I'm like, ma'am or sir. <laughs> Or mostly um teachers deserve breaks first of all and also we don't really get summer breaks like everyone thinks that oh summer break like you're traveling for two and a half months I wish I wish that were the case many most times you know in a lot of different states in the U.S. we like some teachers only get paid for nine months out of the year so those three months they need to go find employment I don't have that problem in in Texas but I know um there's other states that do but like we are also working our summer school jobs now because again teacher pay is trash we do not value educators in the u.s and so it is crazy 
that we have to then, you know, we are teaching for nine months and then we go back to teaching again. I'm getting all my professional development done during that time. I'm going to different conferences. Um, you know, I'm all, I'm still like fine tuning my lessons for the upcoming year. I'm not even lesson planning, just like getting together content. And so when people are like, well, you get a whole summer. I'm like, yeah, because I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm glad you said that because I was about to, yeah, yeah, what's up? <laughs> no, like, I agree with you. Like, I'm glad you brought that up. But yeah, seriously, people, I mean, I, of course, you know, we get, a lot, you know, not a lot, we get the holidays with the kids, but yeah, definitely PD, reading, planning, prepping, uh, connecting with other educators. I mean, every, I feel like where you can find time to yourself or at least, you know, do something fun, that's cool. But a lot of the times it's prepping. And the two, two and a half months, it goes so quickly. So And fast. then it's August and you're back in school. like. And then I'm sitting there like, <laughs> what did I do? Did I even rest? <laughs> like this past summer, I did not rest at all. And I was so mad at myself <laughs> for not resting. Right. And then you're, you're sitting at your desk looking at the calendar like, when's autumn break? <laughs> when's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard that's what people do. I'm not saying that I do that. Of course not. We're, <laughs> we're amazing educators. Why would we ever we count down to anything? <laughs> um okay <laughs> but yeah um so anyways like you, I know you're a reader like so what are you reading like what genres are you into oh that's such a hard question <laughs> you said yeah. that you said that when I why asked would you, you ask that's such that? a hard question it is though like recently I've been on this like kick where I've been trying to read not even a kick I've just been more intentional in my reading and trying to read more books by women of color um and you know have a little bit more representation in their storylines like I grew up reading like Harry Potter and you know fantasy novels my favorite book from when I was a kid was the book thief um but as I've gotten older you know it's like my I feel like I've been trying to read a lot more um even nonfiction. but it makes me upset as I read nonfiction because I'm like this shouldn't be happening um and so there's also that like I'm currently, right now, I'm not even reading any fun books. I'm just reading for school because we have professional development based around this book study. So I'm reading for that. Um, but when I do get a chance, I do like to read a lot of fiction. I don't even know what to call it. Like I like I like dystopian books too. I don't know why. There's something fascinating about a non-world. <laughs> <laughs> you're in there. You're like... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of just like... And it's really terrible, but I love going to airports and seeing what books are like on the number one list. I don't buy them because they're super expensive there. They I know, up, right? They upcharge you. Um, in Texas, we have this store called Half Price Books, and I think it's all across the U.S., but it's basically almost like a book exchange. I don't know. It's like people read books and then they sell it to this bookstore and then they sell it for like half the price. And so I kind of just like wait till it goes on half price. <laughs> um, and I'm like, you know what? I saw that important. I don't got to read it right now. I can wait. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but yeah, I like to read all types of books. That's why I love your page so much <laughs> because I'm like, oh, okay, save, save, save. Like, need to read that one. Need to read that one. And so I love seeing, I love seeing like Pacifico folks like reading these awesome books and like sharing these books because I definitely felt alone growing up. I was like, I know there's readers out there. We out there, but you know, we just don't have a page. <laughs> um, and so now like seeing you, um, this other page that I follow I don't know if you've seen her this islander reads uh yes, she's yes, pretty yes. great yeah and yeah. so I I like love seeing what everyone's reading also there's like that pacifica virtual book club are you in that I am but it, it happens during when oh, I'm like, teaching. like, also like when you're in time right okay. and there was actually one time when uh, during autumn break I was traveling and no jokes I was sitting at a bus stop and Lilika was like Sis, are you there? Because Lani Went was on, you know, Lani. Oh, um, yes. Uh -huh. And then Lilika was like, sis, are you jumping on? I was like, sis, I'm sitting at a bus stop. She's like, jump on. So I literally jumped on the Zoom. And honestly, I was like, this is my phone. The old people, old friends ah. behind me waiting for the bus. We're all waiting for the bus. They're looking at me. And I was like, sumi masen, sumi masen. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm on. And I jumped on just to ask the question about audiobooks. And then I was like, sorry, fam, i got to go. But uh, like every other time, like I want to join. Yeah. It looks so cool. I mean, the books that 
I buy, you know, so we're discussing a cool, but I, I'm like, I'm teaching, man. Come on. I have <laughs> actually also not been able to join in just because it's on Tuesdays and Tuesdays tend to be my day where I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing, but yeah. Tuesdays I like, and then I'll be like on there and I see the stories. I'm like, oh shoot, I missed it again. But I buy the books every <laughs> single month. So here's the thing. I got all the books, y'all. I'm ready to discuss. Just like not ready at the time. <laughs> okay, well, let me catch up and then maybe we can discuss. <laughs> yes. And then, you know, we have a time now. So like, yeah. <laughs> man, but yeah, I mean, I love that there are these, you know, like the book club and like you said, this Polynesian reader who's a nut, she's a book tube booktuber i think that's on youtube Ooh. and i love that i'm meeting like all of you guys that are just polynesian folk who love to read because you know when i started the page like i was just doing the page to add my author to connect with the authors that i that i really like and i was just getting content for my students like i was looking for the latest releases telling wow. them about what authors are up to connecting with authors um yeah, I was that so extra teacher and going saying to my kids, check out this bookstagram page, check out this author, this is what. So just the fact that there are now, I'm like slowly starting to connect with like other islanders. I mean, it's so awesome. Like, I feel like, do our people read? What's up? Like, <laughs> I know you read, you all like I, undercover. I know y'all like, out there, like, I know y'all be out there like Cobra. I'm like, come on guys, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool to read. <laughs> yeah, for real. So, I mean, if a book was written about your life, what would the title be? And what would the blurb tell us about you? I mean, not that you're like old or anything, but I'm just saying, you know. What like, would the blurb say about What would the me? blurb say about um, you? I think it'd be called something about chaotic, like chaotic <laughs> mind of the teacher, something like that. Because I stay, I like, and it's really funny because like my co-host always tells me, he's like, you're just so chaotic. Like, <laughs> It's a lot. Like, you get things done, but I'm always like, why can't you just do it normal? <laughs> um, and then I don't even know my blurb. I don't know. My, like, your, I guess it would be, like, my blurb that's on my, my teacher Instagram right, right, page, right. you know? Your extra friendly, you know, <laughs> science <Neighborhood>. sis. <laughs> you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm your science sis because I'm trying to make it more relatable. <laughs> Right, right. I love that. See, because I was looking at it for ages going, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> we out here. We trying. We try, to, we try to be hip and cool for the kids. <laughs> we have to. Oh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Are you the cool teacher? Obviously. Oh, you know, what's so funny. It's because my kids, like, they're always... <laughs> And the thing is, now I teach with young teachers, too. Like, I'm not the youngest. Before, I used to be the youngest on campus. So everyone used to be like, oh, like, she's the youngest. No, now I'm not anymore. I'm, like, mid-aged now. And so <laughs> I'm not even, like, the cool hip teacher anymore. Like, we got young <laughs> teachers coming. I'm like, oh, man, this young bud is, like, making me competitive. Like, yeah. I got to keep my, keep my game up because I'm not trying to get giving you a like, run for your money, eh? Exactly. Like, oh, you got to bring your A game all the time, sis. <laughs> I'm not trying to get outshined by these new teachers. <laughs> And then, like, all the older veteran teachers are like, that's how we felt when you first came in. They're like, not a good feeling, huh? And I was like, no, I got this, y'all. I'm still me. <laughs> uh, happens to the best of us. What can I, I say? I guess so. I guess so. You know, it's fine. Like, we're learning. We're collaborating now. I guess we can all pull together. <laughs> um, so what books do you want to share with us? What book do you want to recommend to our readers? our listeners and viewers I mean don't hold back <laughs> oh man okay so I actually have them like they're with me but I just wanted to like really shout out if you're a teacher out there that's like teaching somewhere with a diverse population maybe even I don't know maybe even where you're at um it's called culturally responsive teaching and the brain I'm not getting paid to like sponsor this book but I am <laughs> reading it for professional development it's by Zaretta Hammond but I really truly appreciate her insight um, she shouts out Pacific Islander communities, which is really huge. I think most of her research is based so far in California from what I'm only on chapter five. Um, and so I truly do appreciate what she says and like what she has to say about like Pacific Islander culture. It's like really small blurbs, but I just never see us being represented in these teaching books about pedagogy. And so uh, she explains something about how we have to like really appreciate the cultures where our students come from to really teach them truly and so she talks about like the collectivism that pacific islanders 
engage in and we observe. And so that's why when we teach Pacific Islander students, we have to like think about their culture, like the deep culture that they come in, you know, with those values and things like that. So that's one of those things if you're a teacher out there. But, oh my gosh. I would definitely be looking that book up. Definitely. Yeah. And so then this was a book that I read about two years ago. It's called The Power. It's by Naomi Alder. It is wild. (laughs) It is a wild book. I would recommend it to anyone. It really like I still sometimes think about this book and I'm like, what just happened? (laughs) Um, And so this one, I feel like it's more like a feminist book, which is cool. Like I'm a feminist. That's cool. Um, And so do I like have to give like a blurb about it? would like to must read i don't even know yet just like read it just read it it's a non it's a fiction book um it's kind of just it's kind of like dystopian not really it's just like alternate universe i feel like parallel universe um and then now that i was like trying to be more intentional about like reading books by women of color i love this book it's americana by chiamanda and gozi adichie i hope i said her name correctly um but she has a bunch of books and this was the first book that i read by her and i felt like as a child of an immigrant reading this book which is about um like this couple who has like vastly different immigration stories one of them is living in london the other is living in the states um the man he's living in London undocumented and so he kind of talks about his like like thing going on and then um the girl that's living in the U.S. it's like post 9-11 it's a whole thing and so that one's just like this one I could not put down like that was one of those books that I stayed up and I had a ch- I had a class in the summer that I had to teach <laughs> at six in the morning and I was like I finished reading it at four in the morning I was like oh shoot what am I gonna do <laughs> I just like lost track of time you know like I feel like you get you sometimes get those books and then I like will look at the time I'm like oh my god I gotta go to sleep and so I like gotta close it like really reluctantly and put right. it away um I and haven't so that- read that it's it's on my TBR list my to be read but I'm, I'm you're getting me so hyped about it and I'm thinking am I going to go and download the book after and read it oh my god what am I gonna do <laughs> you're getting me so- super yeah, yeah, stop it. And so I love that one. Um, I was also any book by Yagayasi. She had her her debut novel was called Homegoing. It's on my mm-hmm. bookshelf. I forgot to grab it down. Um, that one is I love that book as well. And she just came out with another book. Um, and so again, like I'm really trying to be, you know, intentional. I've been reading some books by Celeste Ng. She's a Vietnamese writer. Yes. Yes. And that's oh, have you read her too? Um I've only read, um, what is her book that I've read? What books of hers have you read? I've, I've read, read the, she, she wrote the, um, everything I never, bit, everything I never got to tell you. Yes. yes. No, I know. Did she do another book? Um, that they made a series. Oh, little of? fires everywhere. Yes, I forgot I she was that. the writer. But, but I haven't watched the series. Did you watch this? The, um, did you watch it? Like that had I did. Reese Witherspoon in them, right? Yes. Yes, and Carrie Washington. Do I need to watch that? I haven't watched it. Should you I? know what? I I'm trying to think. Yes, I I did like it. I thought they did the book very well. Sometimes novels, you know, and storylines don't match up very well. But this one they did pretty okay. I was not upset with it. I was like, the book is way better. But I mean, I feel like that's always the case. The book is always better. But yeah, so Little Fires Everywhere. That was a fantastic book too. You're right. right. Really good. And then I was just, because I saw them advertising it and I was like, because I'm like you, I'm like, oh, sometimes I just don't bother watching because just the book, you know, like. It, you don't want to tarnish it. It ruins it for you, right? Yes. So, um, okay, so I might watch, I'm, I might, it's spring break. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's, it's a mini series too, and so it kind of like, right. I, and I think they're only doing one season because it's just gonna reflect the book, and it, it just ends in the same way that the book does. That you're just kind of like, yeah. what? What happened? Right. Um, so that was one of those. I'm also like on a nonfiction kick right now too. So I'm currently reading the baking of Asian America, um, especially with everything that's going on right now in America around. Um, you know, Asian hate and hate crimes. And so 
I also think that this book is like kind of too tiny to be like talking about anything about Asian American history um, because like again like we don't exist in a monolith um, but it is written by a Chinese professor and so she discusses kind of like starting from a lot of those histories that we just don't hear about like with Filipinos immigrating over and um, talking about like Vietnamese folks when they were coming over and the Laotian groups and uh, Hmong people and so that is currently when I have time and like can work through it like these are like all my summer books that I just like I was buying so many books over the summer and just haven't gotten around to it so that's my goal you've got me so hyped I'm like (laughs) ah because you know like you I also um try and read for work right as a social justice teacher I'm always like reading trying to find reads so then I can like recommend to my students my grade 11 kids but man you got me so hyped I'm like I'm I mean we will put all these books in the bio of course you know details and everything so that other people can enjoy them as well but now my brain's like running so like I gotta find those books I gotta get off here and go find those books look what you've done to me Emma oh my goodness stop it sorry my bad (laughs) wow man I I thought you were kidding when you were like I don't know I can't choose, but you you do not you do not play. You came today to be I like came. this is what's up. I'm ready. <laughs> you know, I'm still out here. Like I'm waiting. Oh, I just ordered um Victor uh, Tonga Victoria's book, Hyphen American. <sighs> I Sis. that's like I'm so ready. I I I've had people who saw me post about it and they're like why isn't this book on Amazon? I was like, Victoria, you know, tongavictoriabooks.com. Order it from there, you know, because I know she did a lot of it. It's all independent and support independent. Amazing. And so I'm just waiting for my, you know what? Honestly, my package could be here. I just haven't had a chance to go to the leasing office yet. (laughs) Um, And so I'm super excited to read that. I just like, I love that there's representation coming out. I grew up not seeing myself in books. And so... Um, you know, I'm I'm hyped. I'm hyped yeah, to see I mean, people as a from Tongan, like hello, you must be even super proud. Like for me as a Pacific Islander, I was like absolutely stoked. Like when I finished reading that, I was just like, Okay, tell me now, <laughs> when is the next book coming out? Where is I was so two? impatient. I was like, please tell me book two is coming in the next month or so. Like I was just that's how mind blo- like it was just yeah, like you said, representation, right? Uh, it's yep. so important. And there were, I had so many questions about, like, Tongan culture and that kind of stuff. So I was just like, maybe I need to just sit down and <laughs> calm down and stop asking the author questions. Like, where's the next book? And I have so many questions. And I was What like, did you mean when you wrote this? <laughs> was this a metaphor? That is I was really- like, who was the guy? Like, is that a real... Like, like I had... Like, I wrote down <laughs> so many questions. Like, I literally, like, not lying, I got on the DMs and I sent her voicemail. <laughs> like, I was <laughs> nearing the end of the book and I was like, oh, my gosh, sis, I just need to tell you this. I just can't believe what happened. Okay, I need to go back to reading the book. I'll message you after. <laughs> and then when it finished, I was like, oh, my gosh, sis, I just finished the book. Okay, I need to reflect. I'll, I'll, t- I'll message you later. <laughs> she must have thought I was crazy, like crazy leaving you know these what? voicemail messages like, like nobody hypes us up more than we hype ourselves <laughs> up i will say that like i anytime, anytime i see pis out there like when i see us on the big screen especially I'm like that's my uncle and they're like that guy saw one oh, oh, <laughs> you know hobbs and shaw like not even gonna lie like i sat and like i went to watch that with my filipino friend she was like look at all these fine islander men i was like <laughs> honestly got to the end she's like are you all right you're a bit quiet I was like yeah just give me a moment oh my God. I was so proud to see like brown people to see islanders and then because these rap uh New Zealand rappers had a song in on the soundtrack oh so what? like I was like just give me a moment to enjoy this I was so emotional seeing just our people like I, you know, I feel like that. Hearing I someone, that. hearing our people, uh-huh. representation, right? 
it's that's it that's it right there that's like sometimes that's all you need to just see yourself in a place Mm -hmm. that you just like is not generally you know represented by us like the fact that there are still many of us that are like first to do anything is still mind-boggling to me i'm like nah y'all like man we've been here for generations like come on like why are we the first like i'm happy to do you know like to do that and like to see that to be like okay look like we're out there like we're making moves we're doing the things um oh i could get on that that's a whole different topic though yeah that's that's, that's a whole like episode two i'm like am i bringing emma back on in two weeks hell yeah i mean like but i mean when we talk about representation i mean just kind of bringing it right back to where we started like you know your role as an educator i mean you know representation in the classroom is so important right representation uh, in regards to like the texts and the curriculum, um, you know, who are our students seeing in the classroom? You know, do they see themselves? Do they see role models in front of them that get them super hyped and excited about learning or excited about the future, right? Like representation. That's it. That It all goes back to it. <laughs> all right. Um, so, I mean... I guess the last thing would be, um, I mean, I just want to say, like, it's been such an honor to have you, have you on the podcast. Like, there, like, I'm not going to get all emotional and stuff, but like, it's been (laughs) such a vibe. Like, as I said, your energy, your enthusiasm as an educator, but even as a person is so contagious, the laughter, like, I'm like, I feel like I've known you for years, you know, and it's like, we literally... Just, just like met. an hour ago, like chat. <laughs> I mean, we chat on the DMs, right? We're like, you know, stories uh-huh. and stuff. But I feel like, sis, we go way back. Like we're we're family. Yeah, we're close now. We're stuck. <laughs> but I just, I guess, before you know, we wrap up. What words of encouragement do you have for someone who is looking to get into education, looking to, you know, get into teaching? What would you say to them? Oh, like do it you know our kids our kids need people that look like them if you're interested in teaching like your voice is much needed in the classroom I feel like all people should be teachers at least once um but yeah like your your story is necessary your you know expertise is necessary um it's needed in the classroom kids need to see diverse you know different narratives and representation in class and if you got a passion for it and you love kids you know you want to see you want kids to do better um do it like that's my only like that's my only advice like you just gotta do it (laughs) just do it just do it like nike said just do it I was like, don't say it. Don't say it. Should Oof, be okay. Just kidding. I don't know. I don't know if they're like gonna like, you know, are they gonna like copyright that? Sorry. Yeah, they're gonna be like, uh, censored. <laughs> okay, there you have it, folks. This is your friendly neighborhood eighth grade science teacher and podcast host, Emanita Alatini. And I was joined today with the host of this lovely podcast, Rosa Not Rosa. <laughs> Peace. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>